Hey everybody, it's Coach Pete. I'm back for another edition of my vlog. Uh, I've always got so many different stories that I want to share with you and have to narrow it down. Narrowing it down is like the hardest part. That's why it, sometimes it takes me so long to get this thing going. So I've made my choices carefully. Um, we're going to start off today with the kind of a cute story that happened uh, to me the other night. I was giving lessons to a brand new student, um, hitting lessons, 11-year-old, uh, big, strong lefty, good athlete. And uh, we started going through the lesson and he had some flaws, like, you know, most a lot of young hitters do. And we started working from the ground up. A lot of it had to do with his stance and where he was holding his hands. And the biggest thing that lacks in most young hitters is hip rotation. Uh, I just didn't have any. So went through everything. We went through a series of drills, as I always do. Um, and as we were going through it, <clears throat> he said, made a comment of, so all of my other coaches have been lying to me, which I thought was cute, funny. And I said, no. I said, uh, your coaches are not lying to you. I said, uh, all of your coaches who have ever tried to teach you are doing the best that they can. I said, it just just so happens I have different knowledge, uh, more modern knowledge in the way that I teach it. I said, so uh, don't look down on any coach that has ever tried to help you. I said, this is just what I do for a living. I said, so that's why I have a lot of knowledge that helps you. So we went on and we continued through the lesson and he uh, began to catch on to the things that I was teaching him and he just started crushing the ball just absolutely crushed. It hit one so hard straight to the back. It hit hit the net, which went into the wall and made this loud boom. It was I turned around to his mother and he was like, my gosh, did you see that? So it was, it was really cool to see. So he turned to me out of nowhere and said, uh, so this must be myth busters for hitting. Now, <laughs> I thought that was really cute. Uh, I've been called a lot of things, um, a lot of cute, funny things by my students. Um, some people have called me the baseball guy. I've been called the pitcher whisperer. I've been called magical. Um, we have this uh, thing in Venom with the think tank magic and with pixie dust. And I've actually been called pixie dust. I have never been called a Mythbuster. So I'm gonna have to add that to my uh, legendary list, which was actually very cool, uh, very complimentary and, and meant a lot to me. So. Uh, the important thing is when I asked him at the end, I said, do you want to come back? And he's like, yes, yes. So that's, uh, th those are the things that I love. And uh, I, I really uh, got a kick out of that, kind of made my day. Um, but what that, what that really comes down to is something that the great Tom House says all the time and said in all of my teachings is that it's, it's what it's simply called is misinformation. Um, misinformation in, in baseball with hitting and pitching and all of the, you know, the hard skills that go to the highest levels. And it's not something that's purposeful. It's just, you have to go out and get good information and uh, you know, you'll be a better coach and, and uh, a better instructor. So I always fall back to that when I hear kids talk about, well, I was taught wrong, well, just different. Um, so that's my little cute story to start. I wanna talk a little bit about Venom um, our 8 to 12 U part-time, summer part-time travel teams. We had our first um, player evaluations last Sunday. It was awesome. Uh, what a great couple of hours that it was. Um, it was a huge success. Um, and like I always tell people, a lot of new players coming in, I say this is, don't, don't get nervous because this is like lessons. And, and it was, that's just the way that we conducted. When we did pitching, we were working with pitchers. When we did catching, we worked with the catchers, hitting, fielding, everything. So it was a lot of fun. Um, it is great to see new faces coming on board. It's it's great to see uh, kids coming back. So I just want to reiterate, reiterate that if any of you are out there and you have your kids playing in, in, in any kind of in-house league and you want to participate, we will be recruiting for the next couple of months going on because we want to have as many teams as possible. It is just a great way to get off-season training, which in-house leagues don't offer, uh, to improve your game, uh, to learn more about the game, play it the right way, and get a chance in the summer to play at a, a, a higher level in, 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 the, uh, in the tournaments that we join. Um, I want to talk a little bit more, staying with Venom, 
with our uh, 13 to 14 year old team, which is basically a seventh and eighth grade team. Uh, this is very unique. The approach we're taking is very unique. We are not a full-time, not going to be a real full-time travel team. What we call this is hybrid. It's a hybrid team. Um, you get the same expert high-level off-season training uh, that our other Venom teams get. You actually get more. Um, again, all of that includes defense, pitching, hitting, catcher, all that stuff. Um, and what we do for the season is play against uh, other teams that are considered, I mean, it's kind of considered Pony League, and other teams that are comprised of seventh and eighth graders. Uh, and we'll have a schedule in the regular season of anywhere from 12 to 20 games. We're not sure yet. So that's going to be our regular season. And then we'll play in five or six tournaments. So you get a little bit of both, of kind of an in-house feeling. And then you get, again, to play at a higher level, playing against uh, in-house all-stars at your grade. So if you have a baseball player who is in seventh and eighth grade, who is playing in-house in any kind of, uh, there's tons of them out there, but you know what I'm talking about. It's not travel. Um, and you want to get a little bit more. You want to improve. You want to see your player get better. You want to see a little bit better uh, competition. Please call. Uh, like I said, this is a really new concept. So um, give us a call. Uh, we're building, we're growing, we'll continue to recruit this team for a while until we establish it. So spread the word. If you got any questions, always you can email me, text me, call me. But again, the seventh and eighth grade team, which would be considered a pony level, is what we call hybrid. Um, you can go to my website as well and look under Venom Teams and just click on it. And then the, a deeper explanation of what that team is, is in there. Okay, so we're going to shift gears a little bit now. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite topics, pitching. Um, and and I, I came up with this because I hear this all the time. And what I'm calling this is what coaches say to pitchers. Um when they're pitching in games, in the middle of an inning, so forth. Um, and, and what I'm about to share and give you as far as my the opinions and the feedback is not just mine. Um, this comes from talking to hundreds upon hundreds of young pitchers over the years, talking about this particular topic. When your coach says this or says that, how does it make you feel? And they tell me. And so... I'm going to go through a bunch of these and, and I'm going to tell you what they tell me and what I think. Okay, so the first thing is when you tell your pitcher, throw strikes or get the ball over the plate. Um, honestly, this doesn't really help because the pitcher already knows that's what he's supposed to do. So you telling him to do something he knows he's supposed to do when he's struggling doesn't really help him. Um, it just puts more pressure on them. You, you got to say something else that's new information to help him get the ball over the plate, not just throw strikes, get the ball over the plate. Even though they're young, they understand that they know to throw strikes and get the ball over the plate. So go beyond that and go into the mechanics. Another one, which is kind of my favorite, is just play catch. I got to be honest with you. Pitching is not playing catch. It is the only thing that's similar to it is that one person's throwing the ball and the other one's catching it. It is not playing catch. Pitching is hard. It's not just playing catch with a kid and if the ball goes four or five feet away, you know, it's okay. It's not. It's so different. It's harder. Um, it can play catch, but they can't all pitch. So it's completely different. Go again beyond that. Another one that I've heard a few times is make the adjustment. And how does, they're relying on you. The young pitcher is relying on you as the coach to tell them what that adjustment needs to be. You saying make the adjustment, I, when I hear it, I go, so what's the adjustment? I probably already know because I'm watching. Tell them what the adjustment is. Whether it's get your knee up, whether it's get your butt out front, longer stride, follow through, whatever, you need to go beyond the obvious 
that something, the pitcher knows if he's struggling, that he's got, something's got to change. You have to tell him what to change. You don't just say, make the adjustment, make a change, do something different. Well, that's quite obvious. You need to go beyond that. Um, you know, your, your criticism, it, it sounds constructive, but honestly, it's destructive because you're pointing out the obvious, what they already know, and you're making it more difficult. You're putting more pressure on them than they already have. And there's a lot of pressure on pitchers because they start every single play. And, you know, championships and games are won with good pitching and solid defense. So again, you got to go beyond these simple things. Kids are smarter than you think. Even from nine years old, I've had these conversations with kids. They're a lot smarter than you think. So go beyond. Um, there are coaches out there that seem to think that they need to say something after every single pitch. It, honestly, it drives me crazy. You don't have to say something after every single pitch. The pitcher hears you. The kids hear you. What you are doing, again, you're trying to be constructive, but you're being destructive. You're putting more pressure on them than already is. If you find a trend that's going wrong or something, that's fine. If you find a trend that's going right and you want to say, stay with it, keep doing what you're doing, I get it. But after every single pitch, I'm going to tell you what the kids tell me. It's annoying and it's distracting. Not my words, young pitchers' words. Um, you have to learn to trust your pitcher. When you give them trust and responsibility, they respond. Okay, so... Again, there's some, not everybody does this, but there are too many that do. You just don't have to say something after every pitch. If it's a ball, it's a ball. If it's a strike, it's a strike. If it's a foul ball, it's a foul ball. Let it go. Wait till there's a trend. If you see that they're going too fast or something, a trend, what could a trend be? They're going too fast, not breathing. Breathe, take your time, so on, right? Wait for a couple of pitches to go by. He's pulling the ball. You know, stay straight, things of that nature. But you don't have to say something after every pitch. I've coached for so long and, and pitching coaches and calling pitches and working with pitchers, and I've never done that. Never done that. Just pull back a little bit because it is very distracting. Um, especially when it comes to your better pitchers, it's just not necessary. It just, it, I'm going to say for any kid, it's not necessary. Pull back, look for a trend. I mean, I even hear coaches, the count is 0-2, and, and they're just harping on the pitcher, harping on the pitcher, and the next thing you know, they walk the kid. Why? Because you're distracting them. They'll lose focus every time they hear your voice. Trust me on this. They hear your voice constantly, and it distracts them, and you'll go from 0-2 to ball four in a heartbeat. I've seen it. I don't, I countless, countless times. So pull back a little bit, put some trust in the pitcher. And before you say anything, look for trends. That's my advice. Um, I'm going to share with you a conversation that I had with my son about this topic. My son is Nicholas. He's 10 years old. Um, he's really good. Um, he's, he's still learning. He's still growing. He's still getting better. Um, Look, he has okay games. He has great games. But I talked to him about this also. And I said, if you had a bunch of coaches in front of you that do these things, what would you say? Or what would you want me to say? He said, so you need to tell them that it's annoying. Uh, we aren't stupid. I'm reading my words here that he made me write. Uh, we know what our jo job is. Uh, and if you tell me what to do every pitch, it only distracts me. So, um, again, if you really want to help your pitchers, look for trends, number one, before you speak. Two, tell them something about their mechanics. And if you don't know about pitching mechanics, then you need to learn. You need to learn modern, effective, safe pitching mechanics. 
go to a seminar, go to NPA seminar, any of these where you can learn mechanics and you can be constructive and you know what your pitcher is doing wrong. Um, I hear a lot of things. This will be another topic, another what coaches say as far as mechanics that just are so off uh, that it's just, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, you got to stop thinking that just because you're a coach or you're a head coach or your assistant coach, that you, you need to make your voice known all of the time. It's, it's over coaching and it's overbearing. Okay. So my advice is careful what you think about what you're saying, be constructive and look for trends before you talk. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being positive. There's nothing wrong with, you know, pitcher is pitching well. There's nothing wrong with, you know, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. There's nothing wrong with saying if the kid is going too fast, slow down, breathe, stay focused, things of that nature. Nothing wrong with that. That's all great stuff. But if you don't know mechanics, don't say anything about the mechanics, okay? And you don't need to say something on every pitch. And don't state the obvious. Go beyond it. Um, this leads me to, and I'm going to end with this, um, knowledge. Um, I've come across I, countless coaches that either through me or through parents will, you know, don't agree with what I teach or whatever. And I, I don't, I don't really care. So when I, if I have a discussion with someone that is pretty positive that they're right and I'm wrong or whatever, or information is conflicting, I have no problem with that. But if you're going to have a discussion here, here's the two things that I say. What have you learned or in the past two or three years that is new? And usually when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the skilled things, pitching, one, hitting, catcher position, things that are tough to do. What have you learned that's new in the past two or three years? Okay, so let's talk about that. If the answer is nothing, then there, to me, there is no discussion because I'm, I'm always low in learning and so are good coaches and good instructors always learn. And if the answer is yes, I have learned something, my next question is, is science involved? If it isn't, again, end of discussion, because biomechanics is science. There's biomechanics of pitching, there's biomechanics of, of hitting. If you don't know anything about that stuff, you, you, need, to, you need to get educated, and then we could be on the same page. Um, modern effective knowledge is what distances good coaches and instructors from others, right? then the ability to teach that knowledge effectively to all ages is what makes you a really great coach or instructor and then have that translate onto the field. Um, knowledge is power. And a lot of people in the industry are afraid of that of power. Trust me when I tell you. So what, what happens? They say they don't like you. They talk trash about you. They and that's just part of it. And none of that bothers me because it's just their insecurity. Um, it has nothing to do with effort. It's got nothing to do with years of experience. I'm going to end there. But I want to say, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, click like, ask questions, and then click on alerts so that when I put up a new video, whether it's a vlog or of a player or something, you'll get the alert and then you'll watch it. And that would be awesome. And that way you don't miss anything. Who wants to miss Coach Pete? Nobody. Ask all the kids. Anyway, that's it for today. I appreciate you listening. I uh, hope you learned something. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Coach Pete out.